Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. So in today's video, we are going to talk about what is the BCS and what are its applications. So now this is the question which you may have to face during the interview. And this has a much importance in case if you are working in formulation or generic product development. So let us begin our discussion with the point number one. Before that, let me zoom in a little so that you will be able to see the presentation correctly. So what is the full form of the BCS? And it stands for Biopharmaceutics Classification System. So according to this system, all the drug substances are divided into four different classes. And how to classify the drug substances into different classes according to the BCS? And here are the here are the examples. So these are these are the four different classes, uh, which are used to explain your drug substance solubility and the permeability. So what is the class one means? So any drug substance which is called as a class one should be highly soluble as well as highly permeable. And what are the example of some of the APIs? Metoprolol or propranolol are the example of BCS class 1 drug substances. What is the BCS class 2? The BCS class 2 drug substances are those who are having low solubility but having high permeability. And the examples of the class 2 is nifedipine and naproxen. Similarly, the BCS class 3 drug substances are highly soluble but they are low permeable. So any drug substance which is having high solubility but low permeability, they can be classified under the class 3. And here are the examples cimetidine and metformin. Last but not the least, the BCS class 4, these drug substances are having low solubility as well as low permeability. And they are the most challenging to develop. And here is example Texol and Chlorthizol. So you must understand and explain the definition of each and every BCS class. Class 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now having discussed this point, what next? The next important question probably you may get during the interview is, okay, so I understand there is a BCS classification wherein the solubility needs to be assessed. So how you are going to assess, define the solubility of the drug substance and it is certainly going to be a very important question for you. This is called as the question within the question. So this is called as the BCS solubility and this BCS solubility needs to be you know, decided based on to the single therapeutic dose. So what is the single therapeutic dose of your product? Is it 200 milligram? Is it 400 milligram? How much dose can be given at a time? And in case if you know that therapeutic dose, so that therapeutic dose must be completely soluble in less than 250 ml of your selected uh, media, aqueous media, which is having the pH ranging from 1.2 to 6.8 and you must maintain the temperature 37 degrees celsius plus or minus 1. So this is not this highest uh, strength. Sometimes if you have a prescription which talks about take the two strength uh, at a time. So that becomes the double of the quantity. So therapeutic dose and uh, highest strength they can be different sometime. So what is the further guidance provided here is, we understand that we need to measure the solubility at the pHs ranging from 1.2 to 6.8. Preferably minimum, the bare minimum requirement is what? At least you should develop the or define the solubility at three different pHs. The one is pH 1.2, Second is pH 4.5 and third is pH 6.8. So these three are bare minimum requirement. In addition to these three pHs, you should also select 
the the fourth ph in case if that ph value has the low solubility for the given drug substance so for example ph 5.4 has the low solubility then you must decide you must define the solubility of your drug substance at ph 5.4 in addition to these three ph values so all together you may have to define the ph uh, solubility at the four different phs and shake flask method can be used uh, for defining the solubility minimum three preparations are preferred while calculation of the uh, solubility which is also called as the equilibrium solubility see when you talk about the solubility area don't you think that the permeability also can be a part of the equation because when you look at the classification it talks about two important terms the first one is solubility the second one is permeability so you must also prepare yourself how to answer about this permeability so how to define the permeability of the drug substance and here is the answer for that i'm just trying to make you clear that you know what questions are possible uh, when you are actually answering uh, the bcs classification question so the high permeability can be concluded when the absolute bioavailability is equal to or greater than 85% now here the term is absolute bioavailability so what is meaning of the absolute bioavailability can be the next important question and i don't want to get stuck at any question during the interview so understand you know the small small questions and this this will going to help you out building the credibility and rapport with the interviewer so what is mean by absolute bioavailability can be the next question or absolute oral bioavailability and here is the answer for your ready reference the amount of drug from a formulation that reaches the systemic circulation relative to an intravenous dose so when you are comparing the amount of drug substance right available in systemic circulation of the solid oral dosage form as compared to if the same drug substance product is given intravenously the dose can differ but it is very important that the absolute bioavailability is nothing but the bioavailability the bioavailability of the solid oral dosage form when given orally as compared to if the same drug substance is given intravenously so that is called as the absolute oral bioavailability okay so when you discussed about the different bcs classifications then the solubility then the permeability then the next important point is what is the importance of bcs why this bcs is so much important when it comes to generic drug product development now when you look at the ich m9 guideline which talks about the bcs based bioweaver now this guideline is very important for you to understand and read because this guideline is going to help you out in understanding why bcs is so important because it is linked with the bioweaver and bioweaver is a very important topic because the bio study is very costly affair equally time consuming and tedious so in case if just understanding the uh, the class a uh, bcs class of your drug substance if the bio study can be waived off you must be very serious about this particular guideline so when the bioweaver is possible then what is the scope of the bioweaver which is given based on to the bcs see all drug substances may not get the bcs based bioweaver but you know the bcs based bioweaver is only applicable to the immediate release solid oral dosage forms or the suspensions which are given orally it is not applicable for the modified release or prolonged release dosage forms it is only applicable for the ir uh, even for the suspension too preferably it is only applicable for the bcs class 1 or bcs class 3 now see when you mention about this term there can be the further question why only bcs class 1 or 3 is allowed and this is related to 
the limiting strip. So what is the BCS class 1? The BCS class 1 API is the API which is having high solubility but the low per, uh, but the uh, high permeability. So sorry but both are high. Solubility is also high and the permeability is also high. So in case if the dissolution is getting over let us say in 15 minutes or 30 minutes your drug substance is already into a solution form and hence there will be no any further impact onto the absorption of the drug substance and for that reason there is no meaning in conducting the bio study what about the bcs class 3 how the bcs class 3 drug substances can have the bio waiver see what is the definition of bcs class 3 now these are the drug substances which are having high solubility but the low permeability see permeability is not into your control it is a physiological property uh, and the solubility can be into your control and if you prove that my drug substance goes into a solution form and will not become the limiting step, then why there is a need of conducting the bio study? Is in case of BCS class 3, the drug substances are highly soluble and if you prove with the dissolution, then there is no further conducting the, and hence there is no further necessity to conduct the bio study. So this is very important you know you must understand what could be the question within question when we discuss this entire topic the biowaver for other strength so in case if you are having the multiple strength dosage forms you conduct the bio study on one dosage form and the rest of the strength rest of the strength you conduct the bio study on to the one of the strength and the another strength can get the biowaver if you prove that there is a similarity factor there is a similar dissolution profile between your bio batch and the rest of the strength. So this way I think you will be able to explain the importance of BCS based biowaver and why it is so important for the generic industry. Thank you so much.